What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today we're gonna be shooting a new gun. Today we're gonna be talking about the all new Springfield Echelon. Now, this gun here is a striker fired polymer frame pistol that looks strikingly similar to a lot of other polymer frame pistols on the market, but that's okay because there's a reason why they're so popular. Now, this guy in particular comes out with a lot of features that are relatively interesting, some kind of expected on the industry today, and I was actually pretty excited about the grip and how it felt and the trigger and everything like that, so I decided to give this bad boy a shot. The first thing that makes this interesting is gonna be the uh, optic system that they're set up with. So first off, they come with pretty excellent sights, as you can see here. We have the similar setup is kind of the Hellcat, I, for the most part, but a little bit taller. So we have a tall front sight, and then a uh, U rear notch, which is kind of interesting, because we have an HD front tritium, and then a U rear notch, which is something that Springfield does relatively well. And then we have their new optic system here, which is called their variable interface system. And basically what that does is come with different pins instead of plates. So you have different pin setups, so you can put Delta Point Pro, Shield RMS, Trigicon RMR, Hollow Sun, all that stuff. So it does come optics ready right out of the box, which is very nice. A lot of guns say they're optics ready, but if you have to order a plate, you're not optics ready. That's not how it works. On top of that, it's a very low mount too, as you can see, because it doesn't need a plate interface, allowing you to get even closer to the gun, which I really do prefer, and that is very nice. Now, one of the interesting things I noticed with this is it's very close to the ejection port. We'll see how that goes. Now, as far as the slide milling, it looks excellent as well. It looks kind of similar to uh, a done-up Glock, in my opinion, and the slide serrations are extremely functional. I like when they do these deep cuts that aren't sharp because those big gross motor movements like grabbing it and ripping it real hard doesn't bother you at all and you can run the slide really well. Down here we have a full Picatinny rail with a four and a half inch barrel and I believe it's a cold hammer forge barrel as well. And if it looks strikingly similar to a Glock 17, it's because it is strikingly similar to a Glock 17. We have the same action operation, polymer frame and all that stuff. And I personally think the slide looks more like a Glock, but my wife thinks it looks more like a PDP. So you'll have to let me know in the comment section what you think it looks more like. Now we do have the AMB magazine release, which is a bane of my existence for the most part in the FNs, but in dry fire practice, it actually felt really good so far. The grip itself was kind of the star of the show. They have good texture on the grip. You can get very high in the beaver tail and it does come with three back straps on top of that they did put texture up on the top of the grip here which is what most companies don't do and I appreciate that they also have an M&P style uh, takedown lever which is very nice I like those for adverse conditions down here we have a flat faced trigger that is striker fired and we do have a trigger safety here and the trigger is actually pretty good so we'll ghost it for you here now the brake is a little heavy but that's okay, because you know if you have hard military primer, stuff like that, you wanna have strong springs. And then the reset is very short and tactical and it pushes your finger out, which is what we're looking for in a defensive gun. I don't care as much about the trigger pull. I'm not a big snob as far as poundage goes, but I do like a short, nice reset, because Ricky Bobby likes to go fast. And the shorter distance between two points, the faster you can get there. So I like that a lot, and then the undercut's done very well also. And then we even have a second undercut, and we even have stippling not only on the trigger guard everywhere you want, but we even have stippling on a bit of a gas pedal here. I gotta tell you, it does seem like, as far as this pistol goes, there was a lot of thought put into this, and it does seem like a lot of fast shooters had an idea of what they wanted with this, because ergonomically, when you bear down on the gun, it does feel really good. Now, I'm not sure how that's gonna translate to actual shooting performance, as you've seen the last couple of videos, I've been wildly wrong. <laughs> but hopefully this one goes pretty well. The weight on this guy is 24 ounces, and with a fire control unit, that's actually very light. Generally, when you get the fire control unit in here, which I haven't talked about yet, but this also runs a SIG Beretta APX style fire control unit. They call it something else, but that is what it is. So that's a serialized part, and then you can take it out of the frame and put it in a different frame if you want a shorter or longer frame. The fire control unit in it is always a nice thing, especially considering you can make it into multiple guns, then you don't have to do paperwork for one. That's always fun. But the one thing I don't like about the fire control unit is they often add weight to a gun, especially with the Breda APX series, stuff like that, whereas this is only 24 ounces, which is the same or even lighter weight than a Glock 19. Considering this is a full-size gun, that's very impressive. And then it also comes with one 17 and one 20 round magazine, giving you all the capacity you're gonna need out of the box. And for all the features that this came with, it's pretty good considering I got this for about 600 bucks in my local shields. Thanks Austin, by the way, for texting me and letting me know it's here. Before we get into the video, I do wanna mention my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys very much. We didn't get it from Springfield. We did buy this gun with the Patreon dollars and I appreciate you supporting the channel. If you like the Honest Gun content, go to the description below, sign up in that link, and join Patreon. I also wanna mention a local shelter in Ames, Iowa. It's the YSS. Those kids could really use your help. As always, 
we have their link to the donate page in the description. I'd really appreciate it if you click that link and give those kids a couple of bucks. And then finally, I do want to thank the sponsor of this video, Sonoran Desert Institute. They sponsor the channel a lot and we really appreciate them. If you're looking to get an education in the firearm industry in any way, whether that be building guns, whether that be working on drones or equipment, the Sonoran Desert Institute is definitely the best place to go for that. It's a great way to make a living, it's a great way to have fun, and it's overall a pretty good life, so go ahead and check them out. All right, so we got some blaze brass in this guy, and we lubed her up with Slip 2000, so we'll just see how the first shots go, we'll zero our optic, and go from there. All right, let's take a look at my three round group, which is not great, but I'm getting used to the gun here. We're at 10 yards. Well, maybe 12, I don't know. That was my three round group right there. And that was my original. You can see me walking them up. I gotta tell you one thing, I'm snatching this trigger hard. For some reason I keep throwing them low when I'm throwing them. That'll be a unique experience. I, I wonder, the grip feels good. I have good space for my support hand. I just gotta get the trigger finger working with the rest of my body, I guess. Good enough. All right, so we got her zeroed up, so I figured we'd just go right back to 75. We had to come back here to get ammo anyway, so I figured we'd not, why not try it, right? It's got a decent trigger and a SRO. Give we might her be a able shot. to hit something from here, yeah. Snatch those first two. This trigger's easy to snatch. You gotta have real good trigger control for me for some reason. The the trigger reach is not quite as long on, on this as some other guns. So my big long fingers are snatching it low. I keep missing low. But you only missed a couple. No, I know. It's a, I just meant it's a it's an accurate gun. It's just a long finger problem. Mm -hmm. Is what I was trying to say. Man, the clouds are really messing with the lighting. Sorry oh, yeah. everybody. day oh yeah I like this roll over prone it's like shooting under a car nobody practices this but cars are cover everywhere oh, 75 underneath the car ain't bad we'll try this at 100 now and we'll see how that goes That's 100 yards, 600 dollar pistol, I'll take that. So 110, I don't know how many rounds we have here. I don't know, seven. Your lucky number. It's a long way. Low. 
There it is. Wow, babe. I like this. Should we see how it defends some barrels? Sure. Not my fastest time. You were caught off guard. <laughs> you are on. Fifteen yards, two mag dumps. What do you think? I hate to say it, but I think I might like this one. I really I like it. I hate the Hellcat series, but they, gotta say, I kind of dig this I one. I like the Hellcat series, and this feels like a big Hellcat mixed with a PDP and a Glock. All right, so first impressions of the Echelon were, it's been a weird week. It's been a weird, weird week. I'm about, I just did a negative Smith & Wesson video, and then the next day, a positive Springfield video. The world is turned on its head. I'm not sure what's going on. Maybe but we should I, buy a lottery ticket. I gotta tell you, a lot of times when they come out with those big, you know, like everybody releases at the same time, and I'm as guilty of that as anybody, a lot of times you get some information that isn't always correct. And in this case, this was badass. I mean, I bought this in my local Shields. I have no affiliation with Springfield at all, and this is really impressive. I mean, as far as it goes so far, obviously we only shot 200, and obviously we have 800 to go, and it's gotta work until then, but bringing it out of the box, throwing some lube in it, shot three different types of ammo today. All of them worked well, all of them super accurate, 110 yards, no problem. I couldn't miss with it. Shooting on, on my side there, underneath the barricade at 75 yards, and still hitting. Shoots fast, shoots accurate, trigger's good, gun's reliable, recoil's relatively low. If you put a weapon light or a uh, surefire on this, it'd be awesome. You know, good home defense gun, great size, obviously a Glock, 10, Glock 17 size, so it's going to be good for duty, carry, home defense, all the things. A 17 round mag out of the box, 20 round mag out of the box, very impressive. Ergonomics are pretty awesome. $600 price point, same as Glock. I mean, what more can you say? It's been done before, it'll be done again, but it is another really, really good polymer frame pistol in a striker fired manner. That is black. That is black, right, right, right. I mean, that is not uncommon in the gun industry, not but uncommon. they keep getting slightly and slightly better, so I appreciate that. Uh, first thing, I love how low the mount is. I love the way the mount works. I love the way it was good right out of the box. Second thing, the serrations on the slide, maybe the best I've ever seen on a, on a stock gun. Very impressive. Like, I mean, you get better on like Atlas or something like that. But as far as these deep cut serrations with this little uh, like sort of high powers cut right here, this thing's so easy to get a hold of and use. Uh, the undercut on the gun is perfect. No Glock knuckle, no nothing. First time ever these Ambi magazine releases work well. I mean, it works well both sides. That's pretty crazy, you know, in, in all fairness. Things got a included magwell, which I didn't mention. It's got a little beveled magwell in there that's better than most guns you're gonna get. Three back straps, the texture goes all the way up, helps you really lock into the gun and shoot it real fast. Yeah, they really did something here, in my opinion. I think this is the they best handgun right Springfield here. has ever produced. In my opinion. I think so. Besides maybe the Hellcat. You don't like the Hellcat, but the I niche the Hellcat fits. It's a solid gun in the 365 size and you know a little bit lower price point. I think they, they're going to do the same thing here. So they did well. They did well. I, I have no complaints. None. Color us impressed. I like to see an FDE one because the Hellcat's got some cool FDEs. Uh, colors and, and uh, OD colors. So eventually, I'm sure that will come to this as well. Uh, I mean, it's wearing a little bit already right there, but other than that... Man, it's impressive. I, trigger's great, reliable, I don't know, it's good. The toads are getting horny, we should wrap this up. Should we wrap it loud. up and just let them bang? Yeah. We're obviously gonna do a full thousand round review of this. Uh, so if you wanna see that, let me know. If you wanna see some comparisons, there's a whole lot of comparisons we could do. So let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your Oklahoma shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.
I want you to say, is it Freaky Friday or something? I don't want to say that. <sighs> you can say that. Oh, you don't want to say it now? It's, it's not my show. Friday or something. It's not You're my show. You're on it all the time. It's not my TV show. If I was Tim the Tool Man Taylor, you'd be the bearded guy who wears flannel. That would be me. <laughs> I'm more sidekick material. <laughs>